Hi, my name is Bruno Gobato. Welcome to Global Shoulder Arthroplasty. We are going to present in-office pre-operative planning. I'm speaking directly from Brazil. Merci, danke schön. I have no conflict of interest for this presentation. And the objective of this video is to show how can you do 3D planning techniques for all your shoulder surgeries, principally arthroplasty, and how this can be done with a no special or company related software. I'm not suggesting that this method is better, it's, it is not. You should use your company software, but you make to make, it's important to understand that we are in a global event and not all countries are the same. For example, in Brazil, we have only one software that is available and it was available just last year. So I have to use only one software or one implant for all my patients. Well, I, I cannot accept that. And we cannot accept today not planning our arthroplasty. So how can we do? Well, we do the planning ourselves. And failure, of course, is not an option. Not planning is not an option. We're going to show how we can do a very simple planning, just like that, that can be used for any shoulder arthroplasty. And with that knowledge, you can even create your own guides. You can plan your own patient-specific grafts. And you can even have the mobile planning for yourself or even uh, augmented reality planning, just like that. We're going to show only using free software, but take in mind that these are not software for medical use. These softwares are only for research, okay? So this is what we're going to show. Let's jump to our software. Software number one is called Invesalius. It's a free software you can download for free. It's very simple, it's from Brazil, but it has a language in English or any, any, any language. In this view, we're going to use the Portuguese version, but it's very simple. First step, it's three steps. First step, we're going to load our CT scan, just as any software. So we're going to import the DICOM files from, from our CT scan. And now we are going to choose the view. We, we always need to choose the Excel view, just like that. And we're going to click on import. It will import the model. And now we have to select the tissue that we want. In this case, it's the bone tissue. So I'm going to hit and select this slider in green to only select in green the bone tissue that I want. I'm OK with that. And now I'm going to click on the button called Create Surface. What the software will do, it will take slice by slice from the Excel view from the CT scan and create a 3D model. But it will create a 3D model for all the bonds. That includes the ribs, the clavicle. So we need to do some tweaks in the next software to remove what we want. Uh, in this case, it's only the scapula for this arthritic shoulder. So it may take some time, some, some seconds, and now we have the 3D model of this arthritic shoulder. Now we're going to jump to step number four, here, number four, and export surface 3D. Just export whatever you want. We're going to sh call shoulder arthrit arthritis and hit OK. Now you already have a 3D model for this patient. And now we're going to open this 3D model in another software called Mesh Mixer. It's also a free software. Here we have the Mesh Mixer model software. We're going to import the model. Shoulder arthritis, it's a big model. It takes some time for big, big models. And now the objective is to select only the part that we want. That's only the shoulder, not the clavicle, not the ribs. So we are going in the next step selecting only the part that we want. This is something like a Photoshop for a 3D model or a paint or a paintbrush for the more for the olders. Uh, we use we choose to, to do it a lot in our childhood. 
So I'm going to hit the select button and I'm going to double click the part of the, the, the bone that I want. In this case, we have only the scapula. That's great. I'm going to hit the Y key. It's called for inverse. So Y key on my keyboard and it will, it will select everything else. And I'm going to hit it delete. Okay, take some time. Now we have, sorry, now we have only the scapula, okay? In this case, I don't want the clavicle to bother me. The clavicle is linked to the scapula. I'm going to delete it. So I'm going to put in a view, select, and now I'm going to draw around only part of the clavicle that is connected, hit delete, and now I'm going to click on this clavicle and hit delete. That can be done also with the humerus if you have the humerus connected uh, with the scapula. I'm going to close this model because this model is a little bit open. So I'm going to hit on edit and make solid. And it's making a solid model. Hit accept. And now we have a scapula that we can manipulate, 3D print and everything else. But in this case, we are going to plan the surgery. So we don't have the, the implants. So we are going to draw the implant ourselves in a very simple way. So I'm going to click on Mesh Mix and I'm going to draw the base plate. So I'm going to select a cylinder and drag over here. Okay, I'm going to click Accept. Now I have a cylinder that's not like our implant, but we're going to create it. So I'm going to hit Edit and Transform. Now we're going to select the implant we want. In this case, we want a 28 base plate, okay? It's, it's from your company. I'm going to select 28 because probably no company will have the same size. So 28 by 28, 28 and the width we're going to select only 5 millimeter. So I have selected here, it's like a coin with a 28 millimeter implant. Let's accept that. Now we have the implant, but we're going to do a little bit better. So I'm going to select duplicate, and now I'm going to do again a transform, and I'm going to create the peg for this implant. In this case, we're going to select a eight millimeter peg, eight millimeter peg, for 15, so a small pack, okay? Let's do again, because I have no 15, 15, enter, now it's okay. Now we can see that we have this object. I'm going to move it just to inside the model, and now we have a implant with a peg. Let's choose accept. Now we have the implant with the peg, but I'm going to do better. I'm going to duplicate again this model, this is small cylinder, edit, duplicate, transform, and I'm going to create the central pin for the K-wire. So in this case we want a 2 millimeter because it's a K-wire, 2 millimeter, and 200 millimeter to have a K-wire. Transform, it's not 200, it's 200 here. Now we have it. Okay, now we have all the model here. I'm going to select all these models and combine them to a single model. And now I can do my planning. I hit on transform and now I can move it wherever I want and I can change the orientation of the model wherever I want for my planning. In this case, let's move it here, let's move down, and now let's see for the retroversion how much do I want to do it. And here it's a very simple way to do our planning. If we want to check if the position of the implant is in the, in the vault of the glenoid, I'm not sure 
if this is okay or not. I can change the retroversion. I can select the scapula, as we can see here, click on edit, and then we do a plain cut. I can cut the model wherever I want, just like that, and I can see and check if my model is in the correct position. And here we have a planning. Let's do the Command Z or Ctrl Z to check. So this is not 100% accurate, of course, because we have just did it visually, but it's a good approximation of our planning. And if you want to choose only the central pin position, we can even select the central pin guide, hit on inverse, select everything else, and now we have the glenoid and the central pin guide that can we do and have our planning. So this is what I want to show you that we can do it in a more difficult way, but can, we can do some planning a little bit better than only drawing with ourselves on the x-ray. Thank you very much for this opportunity and I'm open to suggestions and connecting everyone. Please follow me on LinkedIn. We have some videos there. Bye-bye.